Hello colorful quilters and welcome back to Color Girl on YouTube. I have another fabulous project to share with you. Um, this is going to be a whole quilt top project start to finish again. I'm going to show you how to make the blocks and units, um, sew them together. It's going to be a relative quickie, but the bonus is that this is going to be a new tutorial featuring the classic curves ruler we are going to make half circles okay so these are super fun they're not as difficult as they may look and another great skill to add to your toolbox in curves and specifically the classic curves ruler the classic curves ruler is available um, sold on my website it's um, colorgirlquilts.com as well as all the fabrics that you're going to see me use um, in today's project um, this is another one of those where I got some new fabric in the shop and I so wanted to make something with them but was really undecided the first to arrive um, were these new speckly solids from um, Moda. They are essentially just beautifully colored solids, but they have a very delicate like splatter painting pattern on them, which I think makes them a great for texture and a little more interesting than a traditional solid. So while I was thinking about what I wanted to make with these, um, I got this collection called Midsummer by Pippa Shaw from Figo Fabrics. And it's these, let's see, um, it's these kind of large scale, like fun florals, like this one. It's just a really fun, sweet collection that, um, great for any time of the year, whether you need a shot of sunshine in the winter or something sweet to sew up for um, a summer event. So the great news is, is that when these fabrics arrived, I realized right away that they were the perfect colors to go with my speckle prints. Um, and of course, since they're sort of um, printy and busy, um, you definitely need something to kind of calm them down. So these solids are perfect. So in deciding what I wanted to make with these, I wanted to definitely do something with sort of larger pieces to really be able to show off the fabrics. Um, something kind of graphic to go along with the modern theme of the speckle fabrics and um, and the the modern like just sort of fun loving patterns in the the flower prints. So obviously this project is going to look fabulous in whatever ch fabrics you choose whether it's something from your stash, your scrap bin, your favorite designer fat quarter collection um, or if you want to pick up some of these and make yours like mine it's going to look amazing okay so the two components that we're going to make today and put together are these half circle blocks and i'm doing them all with light backgrounds you can see how my little half circle blocks came together I've made a few of them so that you could get an idea what they're going to look like and we're going to combine those with a flying geese unit so again initially I had planned on doing them all white also and then I thought well of course we'll add the low volume prints instead of just doing them all white but then I went a little bit further and thought maybe it would be more interesting if I incorporated another element of color into the flying geese unit. So um, that's where we started with adding the green. So all of my geese units are one of the speckle prints, a green solid, and a low volume or light print. Um, for the other side but I decided to pick out some more coordinating solids just from my stash um, a few from the shop I have lots of solids here too um, if you need solids so I put a few of them up here so that you can get an idea but I'd love it if you play around once we get sewing make a few of them and start experimenting with your layout and decide which one is your favorite I'll give you a hint that at this point my plan is to create blocks 
like this little piece right here. So it's going to be a flying geese unit and a half circle unit sewn together pointing in the same direction. They're also really cute with them pointing facing each other and then you can twist and turn them to make different patterns. You can do something like this where you get the colored, the colored solids make a square in the middle with a pinwheel and then you can add the circles here. So another way that you can put them together is to create a pinwheel with the green. And I think this one is really fun. I was super tempted to go with this for my layout. Isn't that cute? And then um, add the, the half circles to the outside. This is a really cute option, I think. You'd make several of them and put them together. So there's lots of options. Um, play around with them and find the one that's right for you. Um, the other alternative is just to make all of one or all of the other blocks. I think the little half circles look fun just all together by themselves as well. So you're probably ready to get sewing. Um, the things that you'll need are some like almost solid prints or solid would work too where I need for my the big triangles and the flying geese. You need some light print or white or anything that's going to contrast with your solids for part of the flying geese and some colorful solids that also coordinate but contrast for the other part of your flying geese. For your half circle units you're going to need some prints and then also the, the white or the low volume. Okay, and we will get to cutting and I'll give you those specific measurements. But gather some fabrics together and I hope that you join me. For your half circle blocks, you are going to need your classic curves ruler. You'll also need some painter's tape. I'm going to show you how to mark your ruler. We have to do a something a little bit different for these half circle blocks to make them turn out really nicely. Um, you're going to need a, from the white fabric, you are going to need a nine inch by five inch rectangle. And from the print fabric, you are going to need a four and a quarter by eight and a half inch rectangle. Okay. For the flying geese units, you'll need just a regular straight ruler. And um, it's helpful if you have a square um, that's over nine and a half inches. So I've been using my 12 inch square. Okay, so you are going to need a nine and a half inch square of your dark color, the, the piece that's going to be the large triangle, and then a five inch square for each of these. Now, if you use the same fabric, you'll just need one five inch square per unit. If you do them differently like mine, you'll need two five inch squares, one from each fabric, but that will give you two units because you'll use one for this one and one for the other one. Okay, so, so let's start with the flying geese unit because that's going to be the simplest cutting for you to get started. So first of all, we're going to cut our nine and a half inch square. Okay, take your nine and a half inch square and this is the way I like to cut quarter square triangles. I fold it in half once on the diagonal and make sure that a straight line on my ruler is lined up with the fold of my triangle and the perpendicular edge of my ruler is lined up with the point of the ruler and make that cut. That's going to give you two half square triangles that you can then stack on top of each other. And do the same thing and make that cut. 
that's going to give me four quarter square triangles. And these are going to be the large triangles of my flying geese units. Next, take your solid fabric, whether it's color or white, whatever you choose, and cut a five inch square and then turn it and this one you are only going to cut once on the diagonal and that will give you two half square triangles. So now you can start to see how our flying geese unit is going to come together with the larger triangles we're going to sew these to, to either side like this. So in my case, I would cut also a white five inch square and then half on the diagonal so that I have one orange and one white for this triangle. Okay. And we are going to now cut our curved shapes for the half circle blocks. Um, as I mentioned before, you're going to need a classic curves ruler and then your white fabric and your colored fabric. Now, before we can get started, I want to explain a little bit about why we, are, we mark the ruler with uh, tape to show us where to place our fabric for cutting. For those of you not familiar with the Classic Curves Ruler, I have several videos here on Color Girl Quilt's YouTube showing you the basics of how to do curved piecing, how to do your cutting with the ruler. Basically, it makes curved piece cutting super simple and quick because this one tool allows you to cut 10 different sizes in your favorite curved shapes. You can do Drunkard's Path, Orange Peel, and more. And the beauty is that because of the markings on the ruler, you know where to line up your fabric so that your pieces, your convex and your concave shapes, include the seam allowance and therefore they are really easy to sew together. It makes curved piecing super fun. So. The ruler is originally designed to make quarter circle um, units. And so the original lines on the ruler for the concave shape and the convex shape include a quarter inch of seam allowance for the edges of your shapes. So that if you were making a quarter circle block, you'd have a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around when you sew four of them together, you'd have a nice perfect circle. For today's unit, since we're making a half circle block, we don't need this extra seam allowance on these edges. So I am going to show you how to do put some painter's tape on your ruler to create new markings, um, kind of a little hack for doing something different with your ruler. Okay, so I have one here that is not yet marked so that I can show you how to you do yours. There's another video here on Color Girl YouTube that demonstrates how to sew a full set in circle and it also mentions the marking on the tape or the tape marking on the ruler and so this is a demonstration for um, that tutorial as well. You'll also find photos of these steps on my website on the blog, colorgirlquilts.com. If you look at tutorials using the Classic Curves Ruler, there is a list there of all of the posts featuring how-tos and instructions on the ruler, and one of them demonstrates what I'm gonna show you right now with the tape markings. Okay, so get out your ruler, get some painter's tape or masking tape and your rotary cutter and we'll get to work. Take a length of your tape. It only needs to be, you know, maybe eight inches long. It doesn't have to be super precise. And just stick it right on your cutting mat. Okay, and then take a regular ruler this one turns out to be handy because it's got a really nice quarter inch mark around the edge, um, but you can do it with any ruler. And 
line up the quarter inch mark with the edge of the tape nice and straight and then use your rotary cutter to cut that strip okay now I'm going to take that strip that I just cut go to my classic curves ruler and I actually put mine on the back because then I can still see the writing and markings on the front and it gives a little teeny bit of grip to the back of your ruler so line that up with the one of the the lines on your ruler you can see I'm just gonna kind of slowly place it down so I make sure I have the tape right along that line and I can do another one and same thing I'm gonna put it right along that edge that line for the convex shape okay and now you can see how that looks on the front so it gives me a new um, a new set of lines for lining up my fabric and I'll do the same thing again two times to put it on the remaining two lines so that I end up with my ruler looking like this with quarter inch markings both at the original lines and now I can use the edge of that tape as a new quarter inch line okay so let's go on to our fabric once you've marked your ruler you are good to go I have a four and a quarter by eight and a half inch rectangle so first of all take your ruler or take your fabric horizontal like this on your cutting mat and fold it and take your ruler and since we are working with the convex shape we want the edges of our fabric to be along these markings here like I said ordinarily if we were doing a quarter circle we would do on the outside ones since we are doing a half circle and we want to eliminate a quarter inch we're going to line it up with the edges of the tape I just put on can you see that so the edge of my fabric is right along here and I'm going to be using the four and a half inch groove to cut my curve oops seems I have a dull spot in my cutter okay and that's going to give me my half circle all there is to it okay for your background piece you are going to need a nine inch by five inch rectangle we are going to do the same thing folding it in half and keeping the folded edge on the tape line of our ruler only this time since we are cutting the concave shape the shape that looks like this for the outside of our, our unit we are going to line the edges of our fabric up with the lines that correspond with that shape so you can see I've got the edges here this is the folded edge goes against that line and the, the raw edge goes against that line now this time I'm cutting also with the four and a quart, four and a half inch groove again so my groove stays the same as it did for the other piece I'm just lining the fabric up with the concave shape lines this time so cut your four and a half inch groove remove this piece will be a scrap that you can use for something else and you are going to use this piece this is going to be the outside of your half circle unit and with doing the curved piecing you are going to need some pins 
Um, now, even experienced piecers, if you've done curves a lot before, you may find that you can sew the pieces without pinning. Um, that's the case for me if I'm just doing a quarter circle or a, or a orange peel or something like that. But with these really long curves, the half circles or the full circles, I definitely recommend um, going ahead and pinning them because it makes it a lot easier and it's worth it to do it right the first time rather than having to unpick. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is fold my circle piece in half and pinch it to find that center. You see how it creases the fabric and then bring the end to the center and crease that point and bring the other side to the center and crease that point. So now I have one, two, three points marked on the curve and then my two ends. Those are going to be my um, points to match. I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to do the same thing with the background piece and then turn my piece right sides facing and get out my pins and first of all I always match that center point and then I'll take this first quarter point and match it up with the quarter point on the blue fabric okay and then my two ends as well now this is an important step to make sure that you line up those straight edges see how the fabric kind of wants to turn itself because you're you're kind of twisting it in a way that's not natural for it. So make sure you force it to line up straight there. And same thing on the other side. And if it makes you feel more comfortable, you can add many more pins than I do. Um, if you find that it's really easy for you, you can add fewer pins. Um, just kind of see whatever works and whatever's comfortable as you work your way through. But you're going to have a piece that looks like this and we are ready to go to the sewing machine. We're going to start with a flying geese unit. So first of all you've got your large quarter square triangle from your colored fabric and turn, use your, your background, your white fabric and match up the angled edges. Now one corner, one point is going to line up perfectly and that bottom edge and then the top point is going to overlap a little bit it should be approximately a quarter inch so you're actually going to be sewing down a little bit from the angle but that's if that's what yours looks like that's perfectly normal it should be hanging off a little bit on that end it should line up with the edge perfectly along the angle and then the point match up okay so just go ahead and sew that seam. And again, we're always using a quarter inch seam. And you notice how I have it set so my needle stays down. And now for the curved piece, this is that one that I had that I showed you how to pin. And with the curved piecing, don't be intimidated, just go slowly, okay? This, these are rather small circles, and the tighter the curve, the trickier it can be, but you can definitely do it. Okay, so place your fabric under your presser foot and take a couple of stitches. You wanna make sure you keep the blue and the white fabric edges lined up really nicely. Take a couple of stitches and remove that first pin. And with my left hand, I'm just gonna be holding the top fabric and really working to hold the white fabric as I sew and just between my thumb and forefinger to keep it kind of pushed up against the edge of the blue fabric. The white fabric tends to want to pull back away from the edge, so I'm going to use this, my thumb and forefinger, to keep it lined up. My right hand is just going to continue to guide the entire thing through and make sure 
that it's going smoothly and straight through the presser foot. Okay, so just continue to take your stitches, remove your pins as you come to them. Stop as often as you need to adjust and reposition the fabric. If you find that either the top or the bottom is getting pulled or they're getting separated from each other, stop as often as you need to adjust. That top white piece is going to want to pull away from the bottom blue piece, but don't let it keep those edges aligned. This end sometimes wants to, to shift and separate from each other, so I usually like to, to sew as close as I can to that last pin so that I make sure that I'm holding the top fabric in place as I go. Okay. And I have a nice smooth curve. And we will go to the ironing board and press both of these and then add the other side to the flying geese unit. Okay, here we are at the ironing board. Um, first of all, with my triangles. Now you've got a bias edge here on your large triangle, so make sure that you're really careful not to push and shove that and distort it at all. So just very carefully open up that first seam and put your iron down on top and pick it up and place it down as opposed to sliding it so that you get that curve that that seam nice and flat without distorting your bias edge. All right, for the curved pieces, I will tell you that ordinarily when I'm sewing curves, I always press outward toward the corner pieces. But for some reason, I have found when I'm doing circles and half circles that the fabric seems to lie down better if I do it the opposite. So I've been pressing these in toward the circle. So first of all, just kind of use your fingers to go around your seam and make sure that it's all pointed in toward the center so you're not pressing it wonky. And then put your, your iron down on the fabric. And I don't know why it's different for these than it is for the other blocks, but that's just something that I've noticed. When I try to force it to go out toward the corners like I ordinarily would cut, would press, um, it just gets kind of um, warped and doesn't want to lay down very nicely. Okay, so now my pieces are pressed. I'm going to go back to the sewing machine and sew that um, colored triangle on the other side of this one and get that pressed so that I have two units ready to go. And we will go back to the cutting board and I'll show you how to trim and square them up so you've got nice even pieces. Okay, we are back at the cutting table to square up our blocks, make sure that they're all the same size. Um, this is a really important step, particularly for the curved pieces, because you may find as you're sewing um, that they get a little bit distorted. Um, some of the edges will become kind of uneven just from kind of forcing the fabric to do something that it doesn't really want to do um, sewing those curves. So don't worry if your pieces get a little bit wonky because um, we are going to trim them and square them up, make those edges nice and straight so that all of the blocks are the same size and straight so that they will sew together really nicely. So let's start with the flying geese units. We're going to square all of these to eight and a half by four and a half. Okay, so both both units, the geese and the, the half circles will be eight and a half by four and a half. Okay, so I have my eight and a half inch ruler here and make sure that I've got it oriented right. So this is zero 
four and a half is here. So I want to make sure that these, these actually won't need a lot of trimming down, just like less than an eighth of an inch probably on all sides. The things I want to make sure is that I have a quarter inch up at the top to the outside of my point, which I have that there. And if there is much fabric to trim off, that I make sure I'm cutting off the same on both sides. So I want to center my ruler. I've got about a sixteenth of an inch of orange over here and about a sixteenth of an inch of white over here and just those little tags off the top and eventually I'll cut straight across the bottom. So let's just cut each side. So this is the side I just cut. I'm going to line that up with the edge of my ruler. This is the side. Get that straight at the four and a half inch line. and cut that little tiny bit off the other two sides. And that gives me a nice straight piece, fourth inch seam allowance outside my point, and nice straight edges, okay? So do that for all of your flying geese blocks. They should be eight and a half by four and a half. Now for your half circle blocks, they are also going to be eight and a half by four and a half. And we're going to do essentially the same things, but your reference points for these are going to be the ends of your curve. So either end of your curve, you're going to, you should end up with a fourth inch of background fabric to the outside of each end. And that way, when you sew them together, your, your um, units butt right up against the end of that curve. So again, I'll center, since my ruler is exactly eight and a half, I'll center my, my ruler there. I want to cut the same amount of fabric off each side. So let's shift that a little bit so that I have, you'll see I have a fourth inch to the outside of each end of my curve. And then my four and a half inch line is up here a little further. So I'm going to shift that down and just make sure that I have that pretty straight across. Oops, now I shifted it. Okay, so I have a quarter inch at the end here, a quarter inch here. My four and a half inch line is, is pretty well along that edge. There'll be a few threads to trim, but not much. And I'm gonna cut all the way around here. And switch it okay and now i've got a nice neat half circle block okay now that we have a few of our units pieced let's go ahead and see how they look on the design wall and decide on our layout. Like I told you at the beginning of the video, um, this is gonna be a fun one for you to play around and see how you like putting yours together. I think these are really fun. I love how graphic and interesting the design is with the big shapes. You really get a lot of motion and depending on where you put your colors, how organized you are versus how random, you're going to get a really fun look in your final quilt. Now, the other option, as I was working on these, I started to question my decision to add the extra colors. And so I wanted to see how it would look if I just did all of the background fabrics with whites. Um, so like on the flying geese, have both sides be white instead of one color and one white. So here you can see how we get some, a little more variety and a little, some punches of color in there with the pieces that have the added color. Okay, but which I think is really fun and you could totally mix this up to create different patterns 
within those colors and triangles like I showed you earlier making pinwheels and such but I wanted to see if I liked it better um, with just all white background with my shapes so let's see how that's gonna look and this way I'm the one that does the experimenting and you guys get to see how it looks and decide how you like it the best. Because this is block based and the units are really simple, um, it's going to be really easy to size this up and down to however you want yours to look. So you can make it bigger by making more units or smaller by sewing fewer units. So what do you think of it with all of the background ones in the low volume prints versus the one with a few pops of color here and there? It just gives it a different look. I, I, I'm kind of undecided about which one I like better. Um, I'll have to surprise you with the final quilt um, to see what I end up deciding. But which is your favorite? I would love to know um, how you plan to make yours. So this is all of our co the components that we need for our blocks and to sew them together for our final quilt top. So keep working on your, your units. I've got a few more flying geese to sew before I have enough to make my entire quilt. For my project, I am making 42 blocks. So I'm doing 42 of the half circles and 42 of the flying geese. And I'm going to put them together like this with one goose, one half circle sewn together down the middle to make an eight and a half inch square. Okay, so it'll be eight and a half inches. I'm gonna, since I'm doing 42, I'm going to set them six across in seven rows. So that'll be my, my 42 blocks. So since they will, once they're sewn together, the blocks will finish at eight inches. So that will make my quilt 48 by 56. So just kind of a smallish throw size um, for the sofa, or maybe a little bit big, bigger baby quilt or crib quilt. So um, like I said, you you can make yours as big or as small as you want just by making more or fewer blocks. Let's finish making all of our components and get those blocks sewn together and see how our finished top looks. All right, see you back here in a little bit. All right, guys, here we are. I have finished my quilt top and I love it. I hope that you have been enjoying sewing this one with me as much as I have enjoyed it. And please leave a comment. Tell me about your quilt. You're always welcome to post in the Color Girl Facebook group on your finished projects so that I can see them. I would love to know what you did with this tutorial. Make sure you hit like underneath the video and subscribe to Color Girl Quilts here on YouTube. So what do you think about my decision to make all of the background fabrics the white and low volume and leave out the colors? I'm really happy with how it turned out and I think I'm going to go a different direction with those flying geese that I made with the colors. I was kind of laying them out on my floor and looking at different arrangements and I think that there's definitely something fun that can be done with the ones that I sewed and uh, make even more. So I love how this pattern it has nice big shapes that show off the cute fabrics. Again, these are made from the Midsummer collection from Figo Fabrics. I have them available on my website. And then the more solid ones are called Speckled from Moda and Ruby Star. Those are also sold on the website. So if you like what I did here, I hope that you'll pick, pick up some of this fabric and uh, go ahead and make your own. Don't forget to subscribe here on Color Girl Quilts and um, help me keep making videos like this by supporting the shop at colorgirlquilts.com. Okay, hope you've liked this one. Tell me if you have a suggestion for the next one you want to make with me and I will take requests. Okay, until next time, happy sewing. Bye-bye.